let's just move right on where we left off yesterday. Um, so we are in paragraph um, uh, uh, so we're now describing that it, there isn't just a concept of love that comes from tension. It's a very true, it's a very true concept. It's very relevant, right? It's something that um, we live with <laughs> right now. That's our reality, right? Tension, life. Anything like, you know, stress, livelihood worries, you know, profession, what am I going to do, college, pressure, all that kind of stuff. So now we gain a new appreciation for it and we realize that it can actually bring us to a deeper place within ourselves and to a deeper relationship with Hashem. But it doesn't start and end there. That's what we have to remember. That there's a there's also a there's even a greater love that is going to be given to us as a gift from Hashem that doesn't come from the tension it just comes from Hashem and that is only in the future lesson where we will actually be able to start experiencing it okay so that was the last thing we said so um, so I think we got that already. Whom I should cross over the image for Kenny? We said that. Okay. We're up to Whom I should cross over Ki Hahar and Yamushu, right? Can I see the book for you? Where are we? I don't know. Where are we? That's it? And then you don't have any more. Oh, the memory continues. Oh, really? Oh, oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. That's why I thought we were almost done. Yeah. No, and I'm like, we still have... I hear... I see something. Yeah. Oh, I hear... I see. It could be... It's considered in terror or like another section, like a new mimer. I see there's a dot. Like, mm -hmm. in between. Okay. Okay. It's so pitted. <laughs> yeah, whatever. It it just it's it's really the next part really expounds on an, on an idea that we already spoke about. It just like he goes deeper into it. Okay, so maybe you'll be able to just listen. I don't know. So, um, so we are on we are on twenty seven, uh, all the way on the bottom, the last paragraph. Okay. Anyone did uh, their homework? Sasha. Yesterday I was in the seminary and I said and I gave them homework. And they said they're only gonna do it so I can make them cry. <laughs> so I didn't bring you anything. But anyone? No. Forgot. Or you not? You don't want to share? Forgot. Okay. Don't forget. Yeah. It's hard for you. Uh -huh. What was the homework? If you find yourself trying to distract yourself, oh, you weren't here. If you find yourself trying to distract yourself from an uncomfortable feeling, if you're running away from it, try to stop and articulate what it is that you're trying to run away from and sit with it. I did that unconsciously. Oh, yeah, for the first time. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Yeah, but I didn't know what was like, exactly happening. Okay, awesome. So, what do you mean by unconsciously? Uh, Without, I, like, deciding that you're going to do that? No, like, I knew I was going to, like, I actually said my problems out loud. But, like, I filmed it, but I didn't know it was, like, exactly like this. Like this one more. Awesome. So, you're able to articulate something that's bothering you. In words, and you're saying it's the first time you're doing that. Like, yes. yeah, awesome. Wow, that's amazing. But, yeah, I know I can't do it. Uh -huh. Um, remind me your name, Jaden. Jaden, genuinely, I forgot. I'm okay, sorry. yeah, yeah, I didn't write it down. That's why, but it's okay, it's okay. Um, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. 
to get that, that self-conscious or uncomfortable feeling away, try to stop and articulate what it is that you're feeling uncomfortable about. Because sometimes you get like so scared and you just like are actually all over the place and you don't even realize you're running away. It's kind of what happens to me this time. Somebody has to like tell me, wait, pause. For sure. For sure. For sure. Usually, what happens is, is that we need other people to help us in the beginning, and then once you can start recognizing it, you can then graduate to being able to be to to recognize it by yourself. You understand for sure. That's why having a mentor, a mashpia, or whatever it is, people that they work like you know what I'm saying. It's it's always always important to have somebody else because. There's two things. First of all, we're so wrapped up in it, right? So how can we even know? Sometimes it's like, sometimes like, you know, I, I, I tell something to someone, but there's so many blockages that they're not even understanding me. Like, so you need to be able to peel those layers away. And sometimes you need help with someone because, because, you know, <laughs> I always think about this. Like, what's if, you know, we all have blind spots, right? So what, what do I do? If, 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 if for me it's a blind spot, right? A blind spot means is that I don't see it, no matter how hard I'm going to try. So we need someone else to reflect that to us. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like I don't have enough time to right. do this. Like if I'm feeling something like, it's not that I'm like trying to distract myself, like, I need, but I need to do the next to thing. Right. So I have to. People come back to the author of the in Tanya says, the best time is at night, right before you go to sleep, to make a chesh on a nefesh. Um, so yeah, sometimes you're right. Yeah, you're in the middle of doing a mitzvah. You're in the middle of, you know, you have responsibilities, and we don't want to immobilize ourselves, right, and become like people that are just like. You know, so, you know, but I would say that you do have to designate time for this because that's self-care. I mean, aren't you worth that? Once a week to talk to someone, once a day to talk with yourself, aren't you worth that time? Like, what's more important? You're not handling this. What? No, sorry, remember something. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. No, it's fine. Okay. No, but you know what I'm saying? Like, even even exercise, right? It's so many, I, I struggle with that. So many things that I know, I know is good for me. I know that means I'm taking care of myself. For some reason, it always gets close to the back burner. Why? Why? Because it's hard for us. Because we'd rather do something else. Why? That's exactly the question. Because it's, it's the, the part the part of me that needs to be taken care of, right? and my it's it's really feeling my true self worth, right? You need to say if I if I'm really worthy, right, and if I could really just be there for myself, then I will make sure to take care of myself. Versus if I'm going out there and working more and making more money and 
and right, right and, and, and making and doing things for other people, they're gonna love me, right? Yeah? Anyone have that experience? These are all things that are escapes from myself, and they're mainly driven and motivated by the fact that I can't love myself for just who I am. You know what I'm saying? Now, I'm not telling you, please don't translate it as, as become self-absorbed, selfish people. That only, no, 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 really, really not. But you have to realize that sometimes we need to take the time out to get hold of ourselves so that we can really give the world our life. You know what I'm saying? But it's not coming from a place of neediness. It's coming from a place of wholesomeness. It's like, of course I want to give. But I want to give. Right? So what if you can't figure out this? What? 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 Like what you're going through. So you see, the answer is don't try to figure it out. <laughs> Meaning to say, figuring it out means that where are you? In your head. So I'm not here with the Feel it. Once you allow yourself to feel it, you can then articulate it. You know what I'm saying? Not like, you see a lot of, it's, it's, I totally hear you by the way, it's part of the process, it's like, it's like you're feeling a certain way, and the first thing that jumps into our head is why. Right? Anyone? Why? And then we try to make sense of it. Oh, you know why I'm feeling this way? Because, and a lot of people like to do this, even after, it's like really the therapy that brings them in. Like, you know why I have this issue? Because when I was two years old, my mother did this and this to me. Now, I'm not making fun of it, because it has truth to it. But how long are you going to stay stuck with that? As why this is happening, you know why? Because of that. And now you're crippled for the rest of your life. Did you get what I'm saying? This whole why and trying to make sense of things is that it's important. We have to, it's true. There is going to be a point where you're going to have to go back and see what you went through and why why you you got this belief about yourself, this understanding of yourself. But instead of trying to make sense of it, right? Making sense is still a form of control. Making sense, right? Like, I, I heard someone said that there was, I forgot, I forgot how many years ago, remember there was a, a there was an Israeli um, astronaut that went off to space mm -hmm. on Shabbos. I learned about this. Yes? Okay, and how many years ago was that? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Like history, maybe so. early Well. Yeah, there was a there was a there was an, an Israeli astronaut that went up to space, actually in America. He went up to space and it was on Shabbos and the spaceship blew up and he died. Right? Like as it was coming down, something. Um so someone told me that and you know this this kind of talk also came up at October seventh a lot. It's like, oh you know why it happened? Because it was Shabbos. Um, right? Yeah. So, but no, but let's analyze why. Why? Why is the person saying that? Why? Because that makes them feel safe. Oh, I keep Shabbos. I'm not going to die. You get it? It's all about making sense because I need to feel safe because I need to be in control. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So this trying to understand things, trying to figure things out, is because I can't handle the pain. I want to really understand why it's here, and then I'll be able to get rid of it. Like, oh, let me figure out my problems, because then once I figure it out, it's gone. You get what I'm saying? Like, no, it's not. Because I went to this therapy that told me what happened and, like, which year what happened to me. And I know what happened, but I don't know how to solve it. Like, like you know what I mean? Like, she told me that something happened to me when my brother was born. How does she know? She touched uh, okay. the energy. Okay, she yeah. But yeah. I don't know how to get past it. Yeah, like, okay, I know the problem, but I don't know how to solve it. Cause, like, so sometimes, even though we know why something happened, we can't, like, oh, I know it. Okay, now this is good. Awesome. So what's the solution? I don't know, I'm asking you. But, but, but after sitting in my class, you should be able to answer me. Yeah, I know. What's the solution? 
go there and like have to so really feel the pain of whatever it is that happened. You see, what happened was that when when it did happen, you were young and in survival mode, so you didn't allow yourself to feel the process what's happening. That's really what trauma is. Trauma is that something happens and the brain can't process it, so it disconnects. Yeah? And then, and then we have all these like pieces, and and we need to sort of bring them together again. It's true, it's like Caleb. Yeah. I feel like there are certain people that like it really is a blessing and a curse because I would say like their heart or their nisham or their mind, whatever it is, is so gentle and in touch with what the world actually is, and like they're kind of like such an open vessel for any type of energy or like pain or goodness or whatever. So I've seen in my personal life that it's very hard for those type of people to just like go through pain and move and even feel compassion for themselves, but, or for what's happening, but just move on. Like if you're dealing with someone that like has an extra level of sense of like depth or whatever to these type of things, I feel like it's like more than just radical acceptance or something like that. They just feel it deeper. But it's, but that could create a spiral. A spiral for? For, to fall even, if you, because if these people are really in tune with themselves and they sit with themselves, then they're still, I've seen it, like, literally my old best friend, like, it literally, she just was such a, like, she felt things so deeply that she was able to sit with herself, but because of that, it spiraled and it was like, I, you get in your thoughts too much and you're like, oh, this pain is too consuming. Like if we're using the muscle of like the flood, like some people actually just get drowned in it. Right, but that's exactly the point of the <laughs> is there's a part of you that can't drown. You get what I'm saying? You need to connect to that part. That's what's gonna get you out of there. And connecting to that part is just sitting with yourself long enough, like yeah, because not long enough. I'm mean, saying yeah. to say you can only you can only access that if you can actually go through the pain. So now, you know, she's feeling it deeply. I, first of all, I think that, okay, no, some people are more spiritually sensitive, but I think that most of us need to feel things deeply if we're, if we're, if we're alive and well. And if we're people that feel and have emotions and feelings and, you know, and, and if, and, you know, but it's true that some people experience the pain of uh, the separation of the godly soul um, very, very, very deeply. And they say that that's what makes people become addicts, literally. Like, the pain is just too strong, you know? But um, it seems like the author is saying here exactly that point, that no matter where life is going to take you and how deep it's going to be, just know that it's not all of you. There's still a deeper part of you that is above, above water, can drown. It's impossible. Is that specifically Jews? Yes, absolutely. You have to have a godly soul. So you're like in, like non-Jewish people are can completely. For sure. That's I mean, so sad. You see it all the time, no? Yeah. I, I mean, just... um, People can go to therapy for like 25 years and they're still in the same place. No? Anyway, so so that, that's the point. To be able to know that you can always, you can you need to feel the pain, but then you're, you can always observe it from a higher place because you have a godly soul. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's a part of you. It's a part of you. That's the point. It's a part of you. There are many parts of us, but who am I in my core, in my essence? So, how did we get into this? So, you, oh, you asked me a question. How, how do you figure it out? So, I would say tr stop trying to figure it out. Start feeling whatever it is that you're feeling. Just name it. Just name it. You get what I'm saying? Just feel it. I'm, I'm making it sound simple, but... Okay, let's go back into the nightmare. So, 
we so we're talking about this love that's going to come from above, and then he says he brings the pasuk from Yeshaya, ki heharim yamushu, the mountains will move, the havvayis and the valleys tintena will falter, the chazay meitcha lo yamush, but your goodness and kindness will never move, ubris shleimi lo yamush, and the the covenant between us. Right? And Hashem, light to will never falter. What is that? This is the idea of the high, the high chesed, right? The higher level chesed. The Ahab of Rabbah and the, and the abundant love, Habba that comes from above. In order for it to be, the Yaminah Techapkini, and his right hand will hug us. The Zehu, the Gavama And this is what it means. The government. So when it talks about Mashiach, Mashiach coming, one of the things that it says about Mashiach, it's very interesting. It says the government. So the Pashup shot is that Mashiach is going to be very what's what's Gavar? Tall. Yeah, the government will be very tall. Physically, he's gonna be very tall. Um obviously spiritually, now the author is painting it in a spiritual way. The government is the love that we're going to experience when Mashiach comes is the government. It's going to be a very high love, even higher than the love that we're describing through the Mayim Rabin, which is the Chal Me'aydecha, right? We said Mayim Rabin brings us to love Hashem with all our veriness, the Chal Me'aydecha, and that is an infinite kind of love, really. It touches infinity. And now he says, but the love that we're going to receive as a gift from Hashem, once Mashiach comes, that is the government Ma'ayit, it's even higher than Me'ayit. You understand? The love that is Me'ayit. Okay? So even when all the mountains will falter and the valleys will move and the whole, everything, everything is going to literally fall apart, Hashem's chesed and the fact that he made a covenant with us, the fact that we're connected to him, that is for eternity. That is for all of us. Okay? And that is the love that's going to really, really be uh, tangible and we'll be able to really live it and feel it when the Shia comes. Okay. Um, mm, um, I'm going to continue reading. Okay? Ready? Is it okay that you don't have the words? You'll just listen? Okay. Now, remember, do you remember this mimer is based on the puzzle, Mayim Rabbim Lo Yachu L'chav right? And then, now he goes on to the next few words of the puzzle. And that is, in Yitei and Ishes Kol Haim Beisai, if a person will give all his, what's Haim, his assets, all of his whole household, Bahava in order to buy or love that or sell that love, that will be an embarrassment. So we hear that we're just going to explain in a very deep way. He's gonna say, who's the one that's offering his assets to buy a certain love? He says it's actually talking about Hashem. Okay, ready? How how does he understand this? And ye take Isha's Kalhain Beza. If somebody gives all the assets of his household, but Ahava with this love, for this love, it would be an embarrassment. It's, we mentioned above, we explained above, that the Mayim Rabim, the many waters, are the worries and the burden of livelihood, right? We already spoke about that at length. Unaharis. And then the rivers, what are the rivers? Shehem HaMachshavos, Benyan and Gashmian. Those are the thoughts that we have with physical matters. Yeah. Really random question, kind of. How, what happens when you haven't built your boat strong enough? Like, that's, that's exactly the point. A great question. He says the mind Rabin is what's going to force you to build a strong boat. But what if you can't? But we all could, that's the point. Mm. That's why he starts off with saying, know who you are. Mm -hmm. And now, once you know who you are, you can actually now, when things threaten you, 
So think about it, right? Who gets threatened by something in a way that they that they dread? Let's say so, something something scary is happening, right? Someone is threatening you to the point where you feel like you're 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 having a death kind of experience, right? Mm -hmm. Now, that feels that 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 feels like you're literally someone's dying, right? But why? Why? Because because they think that this is their whole self. You're you're threatening me. And therefore, you're killing me, and therefore, I'm dying. You understand? Versus, he says, you yeah, have to get connected to your godly soul because you have to know that whatever threat can came your way, whatever thing, anything that happened that you felt you were literally dying, there's a part of you that never died. So that gives you the strength to. Pull yourself together and see that it's just a part of you that died. And now I'm going to allow that to make me even stronger. You get it? So you're saying, but what if I can't? I don't think that's a possibility because we, as long as you're Jewish and you have a godly soul, then you can. Right? It's hard, but you can. Yeah? Make sense? Any questions? It was a great question. I liked it. But that's exactly the point. It's like, you feel like, okay, God, I, I'm not strong enough for this. Right? And then we and then we think, like, if I were, we go, like, into our head. Like, if I would grow up this way, or I would have this kind of mother, or this, and that, then I would be strong enough to be able to handle this. Yeah? We have all these, like, but that's exactly the point. It's like, can you look at the darkness and say, you are what's going to make me strong now. I'm going to strengthen my muscles because of this. Because I need to float above you and not, and not get drowned by you. You get what I'm saying? But again, that comes from feeling the darkness, not denying it, and, and giving all the control to Hashem. Letting go of the control. Letting go completely. And giving it over to Hashem, and that means going into prayer, going into davening, fully, 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 with uh, surrendering, surrendering all the control and the fears that I have, and everything that I'm experiencing it, I experience it fully, and then give it to Hashem. Um, any other questions before we move on? Okay, so we said like this, there's Mayim Rabin, and there's Naharis, right? There are many waters, what are that? Third is Afanasa. What are the Naharis? What are the rivers? The thoughts. Okay, now that's, in a certain sense, more challenging, right? What do we know about our thoughts? Do they ever stop? <laughs> no, they never stop. That's the difference between my and Robin. Water, water I could technically put into a cup and it could stay still, right? But what do we know about a river? Always flowing, always moving. That's the machshavik. That are your that those are your thoughts that we are connected to this world, and they are so challenging because sometimes I literally just want to take my brain and stop, stop thinking so much, and it just keeps moving and it's going, it's going, it's going. Okay. So unaharais and the river shehem machshavik is beinian gashmim. Those are the thoughts. That are in material matters. You know why they're called Naharis rivers? Because they are constantly moving. They're constantly flowing. On the other hand, Mayim, water, they can be gathered in one place. And they could stand in one place. Again, Realize he's repeating himself. We already said this in the beginning of this mimer, and he's saying it again. He's saying, Mayim Rabin is any burden of livelihood. Neharais rivers are your fears and all those thoughts, your mental, uh, you know, chatter that goes on in your mind, all that stuff, and they never stop. They just keep going. They flow and flow and flow. All this, he's repeating himself. Lo yachul cannot extinguish es your love that you have towards 
your godly soul and towards Hashem. The other Rabba, and even more so, right? We said, Bohem, it is through these waters, through these war meets. The Al Yadam, and, and, and Al Yadam means it's because of them, that specifically, you're going to come to the, to, to actually feel the love. Even a deeper love. Which we call the love of the Chalmaydecha, the love with all your veriness. That means you're touching a, a, a spark of, of infinity. So we, be, we really just summarize what we said. And now we say, now why does it say next in the Pasuk, as Yitinish is calling basic? And after all this, he says, and Yitinish is calling Beisai. If somebody gives away all the half assets of his belongings of his house, Hain Beisai, what is Hain Beisai? What are his assets? So we said, who is it talking about? It's talking about the assets of Hashem. What are Hashem's assets, so to say? Nekres Chachmas HaTayra. It's the Chachma of Tyra, the wisdom of Tyra. Really? Why? Why is the wisdom of Tyra Hashem's assets? Okay? Shein pirosh v'tame ha-mitzvah, because chachma ha the wisdom of Taira, is really just the explanation and the reasoning for all the mitzvahs that we have. V'nasa mehem b'chinas gan eden, elyem megan eden pachlein. And it's through them that is created the idea of gan eden elyem, right? The garden of Eden of above, the higher level garden of Eden, megan eden pachlein, and the lower level gan eden. Until it, there's a training re- reaction, it goes lower and lower. But their root is really in Hashem's Chachma. Chachma is the beginning of this chain reaction. I'm going to draw it for you on the board. I'm going to explain it all in one minute. Let me just finish reading. But again, you cannot compare its value to Hashem's essence himself. Hashem is above this whole uh, evolutionary process. So I, I say evolutionary process, but is it clear that we're not talking about the Darwin, is that what it's called? The evolution, that's not what we're referring to. We're talking about the spiritual evolutionary process of how things came into this world. Uh, can I erase it? Yeah, let's go next to you. Okay, where does everything begin? Ganeda. What? Ganeda. Like, what do you mean? No. What do you mean, everything? Okay. Right, right. But again, we're referring to uh, Hashem. We're doing. We're talking about Seder Shalshulus. Let's say there's Tashlos. Let's say there's Tashlos. Yeah, the evolutionary process, basically. Right? How things just like rolled into being. Because we find ourselves here in a physical world where physical people sitting. There's tables, there's chairs, there's water bottles, there's cups. Right? But what was the process until we got here? Right? So. We're explaining in this mimer, and Yiti and Isha is called Hain Beisai. And we said it's referring to Hashem. And the Hain, his asset, is Chachma Satayra. But we have to understand that Chachma Satayra is rooted where? In Hashem's Chachma, right? So it's Hashem's wisdom. And then it goes through an evolutionary process until it becomes the Chachma Satayra that we. Right? When we sit down and we learn Taira, right? We sit down and we learn Taira, however much we can grasp and understand. Obviously, we have to study very deep because, again, it's rooted where? It's rooted in the infinite wisdom. If something is infinite, then. You, you could, but it's always, it's always going to be a deeper level, right? So it's deeper and deeper and deeper, and it really never ends. Okay? Is it hard for you to learn if you don't see the words? Yeah? No? You're, it's okay? I can continue reading? 
Yeah, I mean, this is the first time that we've gotten the words during this month. Yeah, we had a whole mind over the words. Oh, really? Not with me. No. Yeah. Mm. The first, I think the first one. No, no I mean, the dirty we had. Yeah. I'm saying we didn't have the English, so like the Hebrew doesn't oh, make a okay. difference for me. Oh, no? <laughs> okay. So, what we have to realize is after this whole Seder Shashos, and after everything that we have and we grasp and we could a little bit understand, can we ever compare that to Hashem's essence himself? Why not? It's limited. When, when Hashem gives forth something to, to us from himself, is, are we getting all of it? Mm-hmm. No. Are we getting it in its pure quality? No. It goes through a lot of what? Contraction, Contraction and symptom and hester, concealment. So not only, not only are we, um, are, is it being contracted, it's also concealed. Because again, if it would be, a sh- if, if, if it would be whatever it is in its essence, in its pure, in its pure form, we wouldn't be able to handle it. Correct? We would not, we would disintegrate from it. It's like, when, it's like going near the sun. It's like you go near the sun, you know, that's what happens. So, everything that we experience here, the godliness that we experience, the mitzvahs that we do, the Torah that we learn, right, and the, the, the Torah knowledge that we try to grasp and understand is all just experiencing a ray of godliness. It's all just experiencing a, 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 a right, he's shining forth, but it's not his essence himself. His essence himself is way deeper, way of more aloof, way above. That's not something we can experience. Correct? That's what we're trying to describe here. Okay? Vizau in Yitin Ish, and this is in Yitin Ish, if a person gives, he says, Who's the Ish? Who's the person? Shehu Lashain Kivurais Bitsimtsuman. This is referring to the strength of Hashem, Ish, the strength of the man who is the strong one, and it's the Geburais. Geburais is what? What do we know about Gebura? Gebura always goes together with Tzimtza. Why? Exactly. Chesed, Chesed gives, like infinitely, right? Chesed gives, 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 gives. Gebura comes and puts boundaries and says, one second. So Hashem wanted a gift. He had a lot to give us, but we wouldn't be able to handle all that light. So Gavura had to come and contract the light and conceal it to the point where we'd be able to receive from Hashem. Okay? So he says, Ish represents this Gavura, this this limiting it, the, the symptom, the contraction, and the concealment. Hashem is the man of war. That's how we know that Ish is referring to Hashem. In order to draw forth from Hashem's essence, lehis to to enliven bechinas chachma, right, which comes from chachma. Chachma is the source of all energy in the world. Right, it's really just a ray of Hashem. It's impossible for God's energy to come through without contraction and concealment. It's not possible because we wouldn't be able to handle it. So in order for Hashem to give us His essence, to give us His light, it has to go through Gehura. It has to go through symptom, contraction. It has to go through Hester. It has to have concealment. Okay? And that's why Hashem is called Ish. Ish, he says, refers to Gevura. There has to be symptom. Okay? Vizehu and Yitain Ish of Kalhain Beisai Bahaba. And this is what it means. And Yitain Ish. If the man, who is Hashem, is going to give Kalhain Beisai Bahaba, he's going to give all of his, the Chachma of the Taira for, for the love. Shehu Ahava is Bahaman Decha. What is that love? That is the love that we refer to, the love that we produce. With all our variness, Hamavur Lamaila, as we discussed at length, Shaul is Begufa de Malka. It's the kind of love where I want to be embraced, Begufa de Malka, in the body of the king. That's referring to what? Really connecting to Hashem in a very intimate way. Right? 
So again, what are we saying here? We're saying like this. Who is the ish? Hashem. What is Hayim Beisai? The Chacham Satayra, right? And what is the Ahava? Our love, right? Our love that we produce, the Chalmai Dacha, that we receive, that we, that comes out from the Mayim Rabbi. So, what, so what's it saying here? You have to understand that every every single thing in life is a process, an evolutionary process. There's always the essence of something and then how it comes out. And I remember before the four seconds we actually touched upon this for like two minutes. And Sophie, I remember you asked me to explain it again. And I'm going to ask and I'm going to explain it again. So remember, he says here that there is a chachma, and from there. Right? There is there is Aden. Okay? There's a concept called Aden, which is Gan Aden, right? Aden. There's a river that comes out of Aden and it waters the garden. Anamar is a river. Okay? So now I realize that I skipped those words for some reason. Um, so what is Aden? Aden is Chachma. Okay? So there's the concept of Chachma. Now, even with ourselves, what do we know? We have Chachma. What goes next? Bina. Bina. And then yes. that. So what's Chachma? How would you... The highest level? Or yes, the, the highest level. How would you describe it? Practically speaking. We all experience this. Oh, it's like a flash of memory. Good. It's, the, it's like called an epiphany, right? It's like... It's like that bolt, bolt of lightning. Like you, like you, you, you find you, you gain clarity in something for a second, though. But usually, if it's chachma, it's not something you can hold on to, right? You could say, "Oh my gosh, I just had an epiphany," and then your friend's like, "What was that?" And you're like, "You know." And then, what do you have to do in order to make it more tangible and more able to be given over to somebody else? You have to go to Bina. So what's Bina? Isn't it like knowing something from something else? Okay. So you're so you're you're giving the exact translation for Bina, which is Mahavi Dharmi Tank Dhar. To understand something from the I'll go, let's speak practically. What does that mean? What does that look like? Knowing something from like when do you start knowing something from something else? When you when you understand when you what? You, you're, you observe it. You start really dissecting it, understanding it, expounding on it. You, you're starting to feel it out. Okay? That's Bina. And then, from there, when you can really feel something out, hopefully it can become Das. Das is when you, you're kind of, like it becomes yours. You own it. It's yours. Okay? The click happens. This is a process in life, but it also, the reason for that is, is because this is the, the ultimate process of everything. There's something called Chachma, Hashem's Chachma, that's Eden. Now it says that in the Zayar, and it really it says it in the Chumash, Venar Yaitun Eden, that there was a river that came out of Eden, Lahash goes to, Bami, I don't have a word, Lahash means to, to water, but it, there's a better word, to, no, to irrigate? To irrigate the garden. What's the Aden? And what's the river? And what's the garden? So Aden is a Chachma. The ch there's a river that comes out of Chachma. What's the river? Bina. Bina. Right? Because Bina is what allows is what allows Chachma to come a little bit further down. And Bina is what Lahashkais Esagan is irrigating the Gan. And he, and he explains the Gan is what? What's Gimel? 
How much is Gimel? Three. And how much is Nun? Fifty-three partials of the Torah. So you might say, by the way, this is the part of the city four partials of the Torah. Um, I don't know, my husband said there's like a whole piece that's finished as one it says 53 and not 54. So I'm not sure. But 53 parshas of the Torah. And in other words, this is what? This is the part that we get to know. Right? Which part of Hashem's Chachma do we get to learn and, and try to understand and try to integrate into our life? The 53 parshas of the Torah. Right? But does it start here? No, it comes from a much higher source. It comes from Hashem's Kaufman himself. So it's like, here you have the etzem. You have the essence of Hashem. But the essence of Hashem we can't handle. So we have to go through a lot of symptoms, through a whole thing. But it's really, the 53 parashas of Torah is being irrigated from the Bina, which is which is coming from the Chachma of Hashem. And this is what we call Chachma of Torah. Right, so that's the next part of the mimer. We have to stop here. Yeah. Um, I remember like the the part that I asked about was because it was talking about four rivers. So it's just one river, or it's four rivers. There's four rivers that come out of Gan Eden. So only one of them does the garden, or all four? Over here it says the Nahar Hayyotim Eden. That there's a river. No, I think out of Gan Eden there's four rivers. So out of the garden? No, but it's interesting. It's a good question because over here, it's it says here like this. He may Eden. Well, let me try to answer. He may Eden shul bechinas kach mitzvahs Eden yitzi nara loshan ham shafa la hashbeis es adam shem gan gan sudarim dairei. So those are the fifty-three parshes of the Torah. Shem pirush v'tamei ham mitzvahs. These are the explanations of the standing of the mitzvahs. The nafsa may have bechinas gan Eden. Right, and through them it becomes the idea of Gan Eden, El Yem and Eden Tafte. Right, because what is Gan Eden? Gan Eden is, is basking in the glory of Hashem, and that is really that is really the, the whole expert. Once I understand, I could. Okay, um, that's a good question. I'm not sure. I have to find out. I Right there, it says in the second comment, there's four rivers that come out of Gan Eden. Mm -hmm. I'm going to find out, Sophie. Okay, and also, Gan and Eden are separate. Thing? It's not yeah. one thing called Gan Eden? No. That's um, the thing. That, that's what I'm saying. It could be we're talking about two separate things. Because here he says straight out that this this process of Eden, irrigating the Gan, is actually what produces Gan Eden. Mm. And then there are four rivers that come out of Gan Eden. But I'm going to find out. It's a shame. Okay. Okay. I'm going to make sure for tomorrow that you get the rest of the number and we're just trying to look like we're gonna be finishing now. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you.